are amazing things. They hold us up. They support us. They make us strong. But bones have other uses. In the past, bones were thrown by diviners, seeking out the mysteries of the future. Now the bones are cubes, made of plastic or resin. But they still reveal things to us. As they fall from our fingers and rattle across the table, the story becomes clear. Welcome to Bone Thrower's Theater, an RPG actual play podcast. Welcome back to Bone Thrower's Theater. My name's Jeff. I usually play Jerland. And this is Jeremy, normally playing Julian Illitz. This is Johnny, and I normally play Chime North. This is Aaron. I usually play Sam Valuge. This is Ellie playing Nidog and Archie. And I'm Jordan, and I am the Game Master. And we are, I guess, finally at the Animal Preserve, which has been taking a long time to get here. We still haven't met anybody there, but we definitely have kept things interesting. I suspect oh, yeah. we met somebody from there. Yes. <laughs> Theoretically, we met people who wanted to take us there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which, that is, Julian's not going to be happy. No. As soon as that, that is revealed, if that is actually uh-huh. the case. so If they were there to rescue us, they should have been a little bit more forthcoming. Right. Yes. So part of the issue with any organization is that when you start thinking in your own logic, you think that other people think the same way. Mm-hmm. No matter where you go, there's always a culture of incestual huh. thinking. Yeah, I mean, you got to think about the fact also that the androids and animal preserve... If they're actually there taking care of animals, even if they're going out helping people that need help, they think purely like Andrew. They're not taught to integrate yeah. with society. Yeah. Well, no, they are taught. We only, we said only ones who were going in. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Two different yeah. job descriptions. If yes. You would. But that, that's an interesting thing because as you said that, Jordan, like you are, you automatically think everybody thinks the way that you do. That kind of kind of makes sense that Julian turned that the other way around because Julian thinks nobody thinks the way he does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, it's yeah. a it's a yeah. common it's a common communication error to think that people have the same vein of thought for you. That's why a lot of American culture is and American law is based around the idea of the reasonable common person. You know, mm-hmm. this yeah. idea that. If you went up to a reasonable person on the street and you said, I think that this is the way that it should be, and it's something that you see as a reasonable idea, people will fall in line with it. That's why there is so much controversy around obscenity laws, you know, and whether or not pieces of art like Kiss Christ should actually be allowed in common society. What we're learning as time goes on is that more and more people have different ideas and different value systems that makes it so that they're not necessarily going to agree with what you might see as reasonable right off the bat. Yeah. So even though from the outside looking in, it's like, yeah, everybody would say, well, this group should have done this. Yeah. I mean, it's two different ways of thinking clashing at a tense moment. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not going to go well. And honestly, I think that time and time and time again, my... Most of the conflicts in the role-playing games that I've run have come down to that communication conflict. Yeah, right. I mean, even through Terra Proximus, the first, we all had the same goals, mm-hmm. but yeah. very different ways of approaching those goals. Yes. Like, very first episode hit the planet, everybody was like, all right, we need to find a way for this group to survive. And it was a Mexican and it standoff. Ended up being everybody's pointing guns at each other. Saying, we need to find a way to survive. We're not fighting each other. We- yeah. <laughs> but yeah. People just wouldn't let me do my science. Science is always the lowest. You wouldn't let yourself do your science. <laughs> That's true. I roll a die and I break my leg. <laughs> and pass out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay that way for the next 60 sessions. <laughs> <laughs> Only because it took us two years to do three days. So the, the, the other side of that is... Even if we had decided that, yes, they were trustworthy, we couldn't because we had predetermined what the timeline was going to be. Yes. Right. And that we were getting off the mountain differently than if we had flown yes. with the aircraft. Right. And from a behind-the-scenes standpoint, it was so challenging uh-huh. yeah. as, as a player trying to make the connections. And yeah. what we probably should have done is 
had a loose outline as far as players going in. Because honestly, we were all trying to resolve these loose ends, mm-hmm. but we're, we're doing it in, in different ways. Jordan is like, ah, this, this loose end, this kid's going to go over here. And I'm sitting there looking at those loose ends. All right, these two go to the... Wait, Jordan, you can't <laughs> <over laughs> <here. laughs> What am I going to do? <laughs> yes. Yeah. There was a lot of head scratching that happened today. That's for sure. And you're right. If we had come in, even if we had come in last session, while there was some really great role-playing last session, I think if we had we had come in with that, with an idea of where we are at different points, then we could fit our scenes into those. And we didn't even, there was one scene that you and I had discussed yesterday that never even came up. Yes. There were a number of scenes that I had thought about, but to to put the the five or six scenes that between discussions would have been able to, would have been difficult. It's like you, instead of needing a single episode to get everything that you would want to in, you would have to have like an entire four hour session. Right. You know, and that just wouldn't work out in terms of structure and plot. And Correct. It'd be a lot of fun to be that experimental, but as we found out, it was hard enough just with the, the threads that we had left ourselves in yeah. one session. But on that note, we do have a flashback scene planned for Sam with some nice. some fun introductory stuff. Nice. Cool. Even though it was, it was a struggle to figure out, like, as it was unfolding, it's a struggle to figure out where certain threads would end up. Mm-hmm. I still like the the storyline of how everything played out as far as that mountaintop scene. I think that was very interesting. It, so it, it was neat because it went very differently than what I expected. Oh, yeah. M- me too. Like, my expectation was that, you know, at one point I had thought to be dis- that I was dis- that Sam was discovered to be poisoning Katari before that mountaintop scene. And either that Sam slash Shade had co-opted the crew in saving their life. And so when Julian says, I'm not leaving this mountain without Sam, he means I'm not leaving this mountain without Sam dead. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) And that there was a conflict. I thought that last session. Here's, I didn't mention this last session, the last commentary session, but here's how differently things could have gone. Because when I did that first mountaintop scene, Johnny said something, and I just rolled with it. In my mind, yeah. it was actually flip flop and reversed. So when I said Sam should have made it down by now, and like Jerry and Bear weren't there, in my mind originally it was Sam that was going down the mountain, and Jerry and Bear were still up at the top. <laughs> oh. But then Johnny, Johnny was like, "Oh yeah, they're almost at the bottom. They're all, they should almost be to the bottom." It's like. Okay, okay, Sam's the one yeah. up to the top. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been completely yeah, different. Yeah, it would have been completely yeah. different. And mm-hmm. that's the thing is that w- this is role-playing without a net. I right. mean, like, yeah. if we if we were doing a traditional non-story game approach, because uh, honestly, let's w- this is more story game well, than that's what traditional. We yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not a dungeon crawl. Right, right. exactly. But if it, if it were along those lines, it, w- it would have been me feeding information to everybody. And it would have felt very different. Yeah, here, right. like, we're doing what we're doing here now with this campaign, it's very improv heavy. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it's very much, I, I'm taking a back seat as the GM in a lot of situations. I'm letting you guys do your own thing. Um, I'm just here to provide complications. You might not necessarily enjoy the complications I've come up with. See, what I always feared was happening on the mountaintop was that we were running from the pirates. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's what I thought initially, that was another too. Because I initially thought that as soon as, when I said Julian's going to go up to the, the the first officer, the first mate, I thought the first officer was going to essentially attack him. Yeah. And then they were going to be like... Oh, we need to get away from these pirates, and that's yeah. the big complication. But then the first, the it was like, all right, we got everybody. You got everybody. You guys should come with us. You guys want to be safe. I was like, okay, it's not the yeah. pi- not the pirates we're fighting. Oh, okay. Well, even, even before <laughs> even before the attack on the airship, I thought like last session, what I thought happened was we offended the pirates somehow. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was in the back of my mind thought it's like there's going to be some North Belsaren contingent that has found us and tracked us down. Always in the back of my mind, I was thinking that. And I thought that the pirates were going to blame us for the destruction of their Uh ships. So many things could have gone down with that. And I think that was what made it fun. The Man of War was a ton of fun. Oh, yeah. Honestly, the thing about that was I never thought of the Man of War as tracking you all down. I thought it was a random... It was a pirate sweep. It was tracking them. Yeah. 
Which, I mean, if you think about it, they were all about attacking the pirates, even in that yeah. odd down the mountain battle scene. But we still didn't know that. For all we know, that they were looking for us. Yeah. yeah. Came across the pirates, wipe out the pirates, and then they're going to keep coming up the mountain. But they didn't. They, 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 they didn't. They wiped out the pirates and they vanished. They boogie. They boogie. Yeah. My thought was that they they probably executed all the pirates and then they were they were going to the nearest military base that they could find. Yeah. yeah. We co- we sort of said this uh, additionally. We keep just adding entities to the group, <laughs> and I actually love the addition of these dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I love the addition of these dogs. These dogs were fantastic. <laughs> they, the dogs didn't even really do anything, but they just added so much story and so much um, emotion and different ways for the characters to interact. So, I mean, if you think about it, we got this complex group. Mm-hmm. We've got our characters, mm-hmm. the, the actual human side or android side, I'm going to lump those in. But then you got the elemental side, mm-hmm. which some of the elementals have more personality than others. More personalities. Than more personalities or a personality. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's working on it. He's working on it. Yes, he's working on it. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff is such a mild mannered guy. And then, totally and then I love how you brought that that in at the end, Jordan, when Julian calls out for Bear, recalling the fact, reminding everybody that Bear also has another personality within him, mm-hmm. other than Bear. <laughs> right. And now we have these two dogs. As well, which so far everybody is doing their best. Everybody, every character is doing their best to defend these dogs. Uh huh. <laughs> like well, I think everybody's up. afraid of afraid of. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, Ch- Chime is, yeah, Chime is mostly just trying to keep the peace. The interesting thing is, like my three by threes involved. Yeah, getting essentially what it, what is it called? Um, you wanted an animal. Uh, companion. I, I wanted an ani- animal companion, but one of my beliefs I wanted to develop is. Friends are good. Yes. And what better storyline than to connect with the person I hated the most? And when you started saving that dog, I was just like, yes, that's just an opening. And then, ironically, how it ended. Freeze it! Freeze it! Freeze it! <laughs> now, now, I will point out that your belief, friends are good, ends with a question mark. Friends are good? <laughs> I like that. There we go. Okay. I remember part, when you froze me. Part, well, <laughs> part of me wanted to interject in that scene right before Bear took out the core and was going to just ask, to, well, no, it was Serrani at that point. I was going to ask Serrani at that point, is this reversible? Is this fixable? Like, yeah. M- Julian recognizing the contrast as this is an elemental problem and not the android yeah. problem, which... The freeze it, freeze it, freeze it was a total reaction to just the elemental problem. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And yes. early on next session, that's going to be a big reveal to everybody else in the group. I mean, uh, well, I don't want to know. Well, yeah, because... Oh, well, Julian might not tell Chime. Julian might tell everybody else and say, don't tell Chime. When, when, hmm. Well, when, yeah, because you've been building that rapport. Hmm. And I don't, Julian doesn't want to set you would, back. You would willingly give Sam that leverage over somebody? Leverage. No. A way to torture Chime? Or a way to... I mean, again, Sam has never done anything intentional against anyone in the group. Other than guitar. <laughs> Who wanted to and hate Julian. you at one point. Let me... And, and Julian. What did I do to hurt you? You were going to try to trap me in the burning building. <laughs> oh, okay. <that's laughs> in the right. darkness. But that, that was, was before, before you met. <laughs> right. I didn't know you now at the time. Now you're my friend. <laughs> you weren't friends. a group then. I'll only kill you painlessly. <laughs> Oh my goodness! I was, thinking, I was like, "How long has it been since Sam murdered somebody?" It's been a while. It's been a while. Too it's been like long. four weeks because. Yeah. Okay, so that's what I was thinking. Sam kills people when he's PMSing. <laughs> oh, <God>. Wow, <laughs> that that might be going a little too far. <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, uh. <laughs> so, so Chime is going to be written out of the group because. Ellie will kill Johnny. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, I'm not really being missing anymore. Right. <laughs> I did like the dogs and how they have brought this, for that one brief moment, this unifying factor to two characters that were sort of probably the butting two, heads. Yeah, the two that are butting heads the most. Well, and, and it butting heads, and it wasn't really, hasn't really been Julian actively butting heads. Is Julian just doesn't know what to make of mm-hmm. 
Archie specifically. Bear seems like an open book. Like you can mm-hmm. read Bear, you can tell what Bear yeah. is. Bear is, doesn't try to hide things. Is, and even even Serrani. Serrani's been very, oh, you want information? This is how it is. Blah, blah, blah. Here's blah, my blah, face. Blah. Yeah. Yeah. Other than the first meeting with Serrani. Yes. Serrani <laughs> has been very yeah. forthcoming. But yeah, it was more, Julian didn't know what to to make of Archie and the complication that the elemental was causing within Archie. And then also, I mean, Julian with his wilderness survival, even though he doesn't have boosted stats in animal handling, is not somebody, I mean, he's very comfortable around friendly animals. Yes. Okay. So he would do his part to care for these dogs as well. And I love also so far what we've seen with the development of, of powers. Jordan, you had an excellent description of Jer just waltzing <laughs> through and healing people without even touching them. I, and, oh, and you cool. said it when you said it. I see if this was a like a comical mystery men type <laughs> movie, <laughs> it it would be like Jer walking the catwalk as like a a model <laughs> walking through yeah. healing everybody. <laughs> With that music playing in the background. Uh-huh. That kind of scene. Zoolander. Yeah, Zoolander. <laughs> Combine Mystery Men and Zoolander. That would be awesome. <laughs> there is some actor overlap in there. Yeah, there is. Uh-huh. Ben Stiller. Yeah. So, and then I had some fun toying with Julian's powers and coming up with new, new and interesting things. Ways. We didn't really explain everything into it, but we've created some check boxes that Julian's got to learn how to do things, and until he does, uh, certain aspects have some complications. I enjoyed putting, just going into like how you were mentioning that you had checked off a lot of boxes for air elementals. Yeah, I got three boxes out of six for air and one for fire there at the end. I really enjoyed having air elementals on a, on a Zeppelin. That made a lot of... Well, I, it that, made a lot of sense to me. It makes the, that it made sense. Make, That's why yeah. when Julian went to the back of the the airship, he, he was like air. reaching out for air. That was his first inclination. Mm-hmm. It's like Shh, this is an airship. There's going to be air elementals. Yeah, and it was fun seeing S- Shade go against another air elemental. When? When the. So I thought you attempted to contact an elemental and you couldn't. No. Okay, and here here's where I think. Inadvertently, Shade was being Shade. Where Julian asked Shade, is it a proxy? You asked if it was a proxy and, and it wasn't a proxy. Shade said, no. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> it was a ship full of air, air elemental powered androids. <laughs> and- <laughs> so Shade said it wasn't a proxy. Didn't reveal the actual information that Julian was looking for. It's because no one asked me. Yes. <laughs> well, he did ask I me. asked you if it was, it a, was proxy. a proxy. And I said no. And so I and said he... no. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> well, okay. Going back to that, when the android attacked Sam, like, and jumped into the darkness and knocked him out, I thought, like, I thought, because you said it wasn't a proxy, I thought it was an innate, and that was their special powers to actually separate. But it's not an android either. Yes, it is. So it can completely leave its body meat soup. Yeah, it's breathing out is for as easy as an air elemental to leave it. And so we've already established that the elementals can be separated from the androids without losing the android. Like the the android doesn't die. Yeah, because it's not no. an organic. That's component. why it went limp. I forgot that part. Yeah, because so that's why okay. like Archie's. Went, el- yeah. Well, there you go. There's an answer. But yeah, that's that. yeah. Archie's ele- elemental was replaced. Yeah. And yeah. actually and has been removed and put back several times. Right. But yeah, I thought it was, that was, it, it was an innate and that was their special ability. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now I'm tracking what's going on there. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I figured it out next, uh, later. Like, now I just got to figure out an air elemental can knock someone out with a touch. No, it can it knock shade out with a touch. Sam was so exhausted and frostbitten. So try to figure out how to knock out a elemental with a touch. Ooh. Yeah, something for uh, Shade to learn. And Shade might do that maliciously. We'll see. And Julian witnessed it. So Julian might... Well, witness darkness and then passing out. Well, then new Shade was knocked out. Yeah. Did everybody notice how Julian raised the persuasion against Nidog? 
Give me your information, and I will try to persuade these two to stop freezing you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> you never guaranteed that they would stop freezing. Yeah. No. Yeah, I know. I know. For several of you, I, I, it felt like tonight was the 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 Sam and, and Julian show. But you all, you all had some pretty great moments. I thought, uh, especially at the end for you. Oh yeah, Ellie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that yeah. was awesome. Uh, there were some good role playing choices yeah. that you made. There, there was one point where I was like, "Oh, I like that." How you were, you used two fate points against yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 I, I, oh, that's an excellent role playing choice right there. Yes. To say, "Ah, yeah. uh, Choler's elemental Nidog is going to use a fate point, yeah. throw down, Choler and use everything, Nidog and then Archie bad. recognizing this elemental is a problem." But not only s- that, he was going to attack my new friend, question mark. Oh, oh okay. yeah. yeah. So it was more development. That's that- honestly why he, he called out your name. He was asking well, you Archie. for help. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good times. So let's go ahead. We're running short in time. Yep. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about uh, advancement. Ten points from me. I spent about ten points this session. Yeah, you did. This was a heavy. You spent a lot. I spent four fate points because I got one for Uh using my quote, and now I have zero. Uh, Well, ended with zero. It will be refreshed. Let's talk role playing, Ellie. For those that, especially that choice at the end, yeah, that that was a key role playing, yeah, moment that you're going to play the 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 dichotomy of and contrast of. The two, the warring, yeah, personalities, yeah. That plus the dog, and thanking Julian for saving the dog. And yes, I yeah. thought, yeah. yes, yeah, because that was definitely a, a character building moment. Yeah, that we could see happening. Well, I mean, it's a character building moment, but I saw I saw more as good in the moment role playing choices because yeah. you could have still showed that progression in different ways but the i mean especially the choice to use two fate points on a single action where you're fighting yourself yeah it's yeah. Th- there's been times where other characters like i remember in terra proximus my character and carlin's character was like all right bro all right hero point all right fine hero point all right fine here's another all right fine you know, yeah, we yeah, wasted yeah. all our hero points just <laughs> on this world other. fighting each other and you decided I'm gonna fight myself. I'm gonna get rid of all my hair points. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> that was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Who advanced their character the most? I'd say probably Julian. Well, and partly that's because so much thought went yes. into pre-planning what part of how Julian's yes. going to progress his powers. Yeah, I mean that was definitely part of it that you put a lot of thought into preparing your powers and everything. But at the same time, you took every opportunity to do that. I mean, but what do you mean by advanced characters? Does that include advancement towards goals? Yes. yes. Then I yes. would then I would claim Jer in the advancement towards getting these people healed. Mm. Um, getting them towards the since he's deciding yeah. people. Yeah. The one for Julian, one for Jer. I would I would say Jer as well. Mm. For that same reason. Right, I'm in agreement. Yeah. All right, Jeff, go ahead and add another point to your sheet. Sweet. Oh, another really hard one. Oh, my gosh. Food point was, for everybody. <laughs> food was ridiculous. Oh, man. It was. So, yeah. We only had one sweet thing this time. The meringues. The meringues. Yeah. Uh, well, the blueberry no, the muffins. blueberry muffins. Yeah, yeah. Blueberry muffins. Those were damn good. Uh, they they were, were so good. So fluffy. Blueberry good. muffins. We had kimchi fried rice. It was quite delicious. We had shepherd's pie, baked potato... We had so pineapple barbecue chicken Oof. bacon kebabs. <laughs> so good. We had General So's ground beef. Ground beef. You guys are making me rice. Re- regret my bariatric surgery. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> Food was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, it was a good I, day. I we mean, all came to win. Yeah, I, 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 this is another one. We have those times where it's like, oh, this is the winner. Why did we all bring this on the same week? <laughs> because everybody we should have spaced this out. We all could have gotten a point. <laughs> yeah, we should start coordinating when we bring some Just don't mention it to me. <laughs> like, when are you bringing your next badass treat? Like <laughs> Every time. 
That's <laughs> great time. Now Johnny comes to win. I gotta get my I, points somewhere. I, I, come to, I come to try and beat Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My goal is to win. Jeremy's goal is to beat me. Yes. I come to eat all the food. So. <laughs> Honestly, I'm gonna, mine is, beat, even though everything was fantastic, mine, I keep going back and forth between those blueberry muffins and mm. the last thing I ate, the General Tso's ground beef was so good. I didn't get I didn't try the ground beef. Oh my gosh, it's um, so good. So you're between the ground beef I, and yeah, I didn't, the muffins. I yeah, the that, muffins to me were the muffins were I, I haven't had fantastic. regular mutton muffins and I don't mutton. know how long <laughs> fresh <laughs> mutton. Those either. fresh blueberries though. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Huge difference. It, yeah, fresh blueberries make a huge difference. This is an advertisement for my orchard. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, actually she does have an orchard. True thing. Okay, I'm going to and very rarely I, I do this, but I'm going to say that the effort of the hand-picked blueberries and like the homemade aspect of it is going to push that over the top for me. So that my vote is for the blueberry muffins. They were so good. Thanks, man. They were very good. Even really that, good. I, I, no, Jeff, Jeff. Jeff is oh. <laughs> so speaking to me, man. It's so I know good. it is. It's so good. <laughs> It's so good. So, <laughs> so, so. Just generally speaking, it was good. Yes. See, I'm saying either the kimchi rice or the baked potato. Baked potato or skewers for me. The skewers are where I'm leaning. Or the baked potato. Oh, <laughs> look at this. Oh, man. Look at this. Everybody grab a die. <laughs> Roll a die. Uh, yeah. Odd or even. Yeah. Mine was leaning towards either the General Tso's or the kimchi rice. <laughs> You can see the moods that we're all in. Like, oh, man. <laughs> the potatoes were good. The, the skewers were good. Potatoes were... Mm. Oh. Yeah. Mm. The, the skin was just... That was, everything the, was... I, I loved eating that last little piece of bottom skin that was uh -huh. left on the plate. It was like all crunchy. And, oh, yeah. man. Okay, <laughs> potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> you talked yourself into the potatoes. Yeah, talked myself into the potatoes. <laughs> Sounds like Ellie talked herself into the potatoes, too. No. 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 I'm going to go skewers. Skewers? Okay. So. <laughs> I forgot to sit us on the assignment. <laughs> <laughs> Roll a die and I break my leg. <laughs> <laughs> so arbitrary. <laughs> <laughs> it fit my character. <laughs> kimchi rice was good, man. Even as rice. Kimchi rice. Kimchi rice, kimchi rice. Blueberry muffins, skewers, skewers and potato. potato. So it looks like kimchi rice wins. <laughs> That's the second time you did that last time, too. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just bringing this big ass up. Whatever. <laughs> I think you even said on there, it's like, as soon as I walked in, why did I even bother? Yeah. You win the point. <laughs> this time, I planned But it was peanut butter bars last yeah, time. Yeah, peanut butter bars last time. This time, so good. That was Hannah's choice. Yeah, it was. I, I chose the kimchi rice because I was like, I have leftover rice. I have leftover kimchi. Let's make some kimchi fried rice. Yeah. And... Well, thank you so much for listening, everybody. Uh, sorry this is a little shorter episode, but, you know, we will catch you all next time, and we'll have to find out what happens to Archie at the Animal Preserve. Until then, have a good one. Thank you for listening to Bone Thrower's Theater. Our cast is Aaron, Ellie, Jeff, Jeremy, Johnny, and Jordan. We are releasing this podcast under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 3.0 unported license. That means you can share the podcast, but please do not modify it or try to gain financially from it. If you would like to visit our website, you can do so at bonethrowerstheater.com. If you would like to send us an email, you can do so at bonethrowerstheater at gmail.com. Our Twitter handle is bonethrowerstheater. You can also look us up on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And until next time, may the bones fall ever in your favor. This has been a Nerd Circle podcast production.